I wanted to um, discuss the upcoming conjunction of Saturn in Capricorn with Pluto in Capricorn. Um, this occurs at uh, 22 Capricorn 46 on the 12th of January next year. Um, uh, and that's its precise, its precise degree. But in general, it hangs around for about a year or two. And I'd like to discuss these two symbolisms, um, both on an outer level and on an inner level, for those people that might be under this transit uh, in any one of their planets in their horoscope. Um, it's around about the 23, 24, 25th degree of Capricorn. But at the moment also, of course, it's, um, it's featured in uh, various of my videos. And, uh, and it's to do with the moving away, the gradual decline of old ruling powers. And because Pluto in Capricorn has been doing this since actually uh, 2008, since the financial crisis. And of course, uh, a lot of the dodgy dealings of the bank, bank, various banks, all banks, of course, you know, um, uh, to do with money laundering and um, all kinds of dodgy dealings with financial services led to the collapse of the banks and then of course the public having to bail them out and then an age of austerity which is a very Saturnian Capricornian word you know to do with restriction and uh, you know constriction and constraint of various things and usually often represents for those people without money often represents a sphere of financial hardship you know, these are some of the external things that you, you can relate with with Saturn is the the onus, which is chief symbol is basically the, the onus of being alive in an incarnate situation in your body. When you come in, when the spirit of life lives within any set form, it's that form which is subject to harm and through it the spirit. Um, Saturn represents that or symbolizes that very process of incarnating within a form and so it, in its own way represents um, a, a severe constraint around the spiritual life around the around the soul around um, just consciousness itself is somehow um, it imprinted in the in the bodies and the minds uh, we're, we're in and it's while it's in there while it's become focused through an individual say unit of um, of incarnation in the form of an individual it's there that Saturn can represent the most vulnerable part of us so in a horoscope it's it's um, it's it's although we may set up our defenses and set up our our ways of dealing with conflict or things that depress us or things that might oppose us um, depending on how uh, um, responsible we are depending on how well we can manage our defenses is uh, we, we need to be defended because the Saturn represents that our boundaries you see boundaries of our individual personalities the boundary of the body the skin and so therefore if we're not up to the mark be an authority within ourselves have our own um, uh, ability to if you like marshal our forces in inside it's all a very saturnian order to to um, be self-disciplined and to be able to take on to be organized in oneself to a point where you can take on the uh, the collective then Saturn appears as the outside as other authorities I recently have uh, been been through a Saturn opposed Sun and I went through a three-month chest infection it was uh, I decided not to um, use antibiotics and went through quite a, 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 a state with it it uh, threatened my constitution my life energy and I was in bed a lot of the time although I did manage to do various things through it um, but it was a testing of the strength of the constitution of my life force. So Saturn's sun, for example, often does represent a bit of an illness or something that one must go through. But um, I'd also like to say with any transits, we're going to look at a few um, or, or just touch on a few. When any, if, if something coincides uh, in alignment with the symbolism, rather I was looking at Julian Assange, for example, his... Pluto Saturn is opposed to his Mercury 
in uh, 23 cancer um, something about it is is right that he's drawn those forces of um, the 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 inner state the dark state Pluto and Saturn um, the Saturn often represents the the authoritative bodies the states those those people in in positions of power and Capricorn often again represents or authoritative bodies, corporate bodies, uh, institutions which have a, 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 an organized oppressiveness or an organized structure which can um, uh, totally demolish individuals with their power and their might. Uh, as if Capricorn you know, can be symbolized as, the, um, a, a, as a solid mountain and um, those people that have climbed to the top of that mountain of power or position or status including ego status they uh, are disinclined to be knocked off of it however thinking about pluto you see wherever pluto transits it brings out those worst elements of the sign it brings out those elements, for example, in all, all authoritative structures, all you know, the states, um, you know, governments, um, building, uh, building organizations, banks, um, the institutionalization of a religion through churches. It's as if um, with Pluto going through that, all of the rubbish, all of the, the, the dark sides of things have been brought out into the open and made public. This is just yet, and the Julian Assange case is just yet another uh, um, uh, example of this, um, of what happens behind closed doors within those 12th house organizations, the secret societies, the spies, the CIAs and the Mossads and all, every, it's not just one country or another, it's that side of life which um, it deals with some very subversive and nasty cruelties that go on beneath the, um, uh, the, the, the surface of consciousness. So when Pluto is, is in a sign, it seems to take that sign, take, take the energy and it tries to purge out of it whatever is in it that is, is wrong or gone corrupt. Now, once, once it's done the purging, it's, 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 um, uh, it's, it's Saturn has done his job in a way. I've always liked that um, thought comes to mind of um, uh, a rather notable astrologer in her age was Christina Rose, British astrologer. She wrote a fantastic book called Astrological Counselling and was at the forefront of using astrology in a psychological way to help clients uh, develop themselves and to see what was taking place, processes going on in people. I had my first astrological reading with Christina Rose and I still have it on tape actually somewhere. She encouraged me in my astrological career and um, uh, and she I bought her book many years ago and one of the images she used for Pluto in its transit was this um, uh, 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 something at the the dockyards which which scoops up all of the the crud and all of the bottom of the dockyard all the mud and the oil laden silt and everything else and it brings things up in order to clear the clear the, the bottom of the sea out and who knows what's down there old tesco um, carts and bits and pieces vans and you know a few dead bodies might come up whatever it is it's it's a sense that something is bringing things up from the unconscious from the unknown and in a personal sense this can often bring out great fears of death or uh, maybe an unlived life somewhere that one's been leading and pluto passes across and He's the Lord of the underworld and he draws things out of the underworld to himself. Remember, gods have their particular domains and their each domain is important. So in, in us, Pluto, as I say, represents that uh, deep patterning within us that if we're to change, if we're to radically alter the course of our lives, something in us usually has to die, an old attitude an old way of being. Um, maybe it can be done with purging out of our uh, poisons or toxins within the body through fasting and things like that. So these are just some of the things that Pluto transits represent. 
Saturn transits, on the other hand, seem to represent us uh, sharpening ourselves up, becoming our own inner authority. And as I said before, if we're not uh, in charge of our own domain, charge of our own mind, have be able to look after ourselves through emotional patches or periods of financial difficulty, then the, uh, as they say, the only two certainties in life were death and taxes. I think that's a very Saturn Pluto element. So they challenge every and each, every individual to find what it is that is holding them back, to find what it is in their own unconscious and to bring it forth and get it purged, get it looked at. So say this good, if it relates to Mercury, it's usually some old thinking pattern. If it's in, um, if it's something to do, if you're transiting the moon, often has a, something to do with the old family relating patterns and how how your how you how your empathic rapport with others is not quite as it should be. Um, Saturn Pluto Saturn moon uh, Pluto moon often refer to a period of emotional downness downness, and it's as if the psyche is calling us down. Um, in the, I think it was the 16th and 17th centuries, this idea of a melancholia was not just a depression, but it was a, a, a feeling that you would be taken down into some very dark and difficult feelings in order to find something in yourself which had been lost. Sometimes the psyche gets up to these games and these very these difficulties takes us through periods of emotional uh, kind of emotional journey. Sometimes depression, sometimes obsession, sexual obsession, whatever it is. It's as if our, our feelings control us, and so we get melancholic and down, and um, and this is a feeling of being sunk into the the underworld, the underside of life, stuff we haven't looked at for years, and so. Uh, particularly with um, the moon, this can take us down into those kind of feelings in order to um, pass uh, pass through this um, difficulty phase and learn something about our emotions, particularly the old things which ties, uh, tie us to the past. Maybe old deaths that we haven't looked at that need purging or, 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 or going through a kind of period of mourning. I often say to clients with this that uh, they need to have a period of intense psychotherapy or, or, or review and to learn quietude and in the comfort of their own silence, see what emerges in the light of day of their own thoughts and dreams. Venus is obvious, it's our capacity to relate with others on a deeper level, sexual thoughts, sexual feelings and thoughts, um, sexual elements. It's time to purge ourselves of relationships which no longer work. With Pluto, Mars, often feelings of powerless. How are we directing our will? Um, it, it takes us away from the normal channels and uh, again, can often lead to a depression, but it's as if our direction in life is being challenged and no matter what we put out there, it, 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 it seems to fade into a kind of powerless stew of nothing, a brew of um, uh, uh, di difficulty and, uh, and so on until that passes. But what and Jupiter, of course, is a, a, a loss of belief. Pluto, Saturn is a breakdown of our normal construction, our normal mental constructions, as if the like the like I was talking about with um, uh, Notre Dame uh, ca uh, Cathedral being burnt. The, the roof Saturn represents the, the the structural elements of the building itself. Something is being purged there, and it's not surprising that old structures of the past, including the institutions which are represented are somehow on fire. I've noticed with Pluto that the two most, well, two, three, three, three key words stand out. One is fire, because fire transforms absolutely. It transforms, it goes across form, it literally destroys, and, and something in its, what Pluto represents is the death and rebirth of something. Um, when it's combined with Saturn, it's an old form, an old structure, an old authority. Father figures, monarchs, presidents, people that we like, they seem to are uh, in a period of decay or decline. Um, it, it, somehow it marks a, a grand era of uh, institutionalized change the world over. Now, in the individual, of course, whoever is the commander in chief, 
whether it's been fears for a long time, fear of death, or um, we, 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 we felt guilty, or we have self-recrimination, it's time to bring that to the surface and let it go. That's the key element of this, is letting it go in order to, for something to um, re-emerge, if you like, or uh, like, like the phoenix through the ashes. Um, as Jung said, most of the problems in our own psychology are not to do with the fact that the problems are there, but to do with us um, uh, clamping ourselves or, or, or um, constraining ourselves through defensive maneuvers and not allowing the pain to emerge to go through it so that it can be let go more quickly. A lot of work in psychotherapy as Freud and Wilhelm Reich both um, um, studied very well was the, the idea that when a person comes into psychoanalysis, which is a very plutonic thing, um, that they stop or they resist the whole process of speaking their mind, of feeling free. And suddenly they find that they're not free, that they're embarrassed or, or the, the things they want to say are difficult. They have a fear of being judged and what comes to the surface immediately is this super ego that judges themselves or constrains or limits what they have to say. Now, what I'm doing here is just letting my mind freely move around these images to conjure up some ideas and uh, some images to, to, that represent a process of demolition, of slow decay, uh, uh, all in line for a rebirth. This will happen on an individual level in relation to the planet that it transits in horoscope. Of course, one thing I didn't mention was the sun. And when Pluto, Saturn are going to hit the sun, which are for those people born around 13th of April by square, it will be around about 15th of July, it will be opposed to your sun then. Now I'm talking about two or three days either side of this. 17th of October, which will be the Librans, which will be square. And the conjunction itself, those people born around the 13th of January, give or take, you know, from about 11 to 15 January, somewhere, 15th of January. So give or take five days around these dates, you will be experiencing this Pluto Saturn conjunction on your sun. And it's the, the center of your identity. It's um, a testing to see whether you're authentic and being true to your own inner nature. That's the essential pattern of Pluto's sun. And, but when you, when you combine them, you have this destruction of form and the building up of form. These planets are, in fact, both gods of death. Um, Saturn, in traditional astrology, rules grave diggers. It marks the end of the line. It's a, as if the body wears out. It's, it, it, it's grown and it's finished. But the, the Plutonic element is simply represents the passing of form and the transformation of the spirit onto a different dimension of life. Um, and in psychological terms, we often have to be uh, demolished. We have to go through a fire or a decay, or we need to face and confront our deepest fears about what are they are, whatever they are, our, our self-recriminations, our, our, our own judgment of our own consciousness, consciences. All of these things and more are likely to come out amidst this Pluto-Saturn conjunction. This is, I suppose, the darker teachings. These are the emotions which teach us most about life because their darker feelings of emotion doesn't mean to say they are not educational or have value. Jung's psychology was very much about making the, the dark lighter, to bring it out into the light of day, to make a relationship um, with the ego. So the, there's the unconscious and the ego, and we have the unconscious, the dark, those forces in us, right from the ancestral past, through our family, through our parents, and through uh, eventually into the nation. So we, we actually are our humanity in a particular form, in a particular life wave, uh, dealing with these um, uh, past concerns, perhaps even past life concerns, or um, concerns which are just simply in life that pass through us. And so when, when Pluto enters, uh, it passes a, a part in our horoscope, it's as if a 
portal opens up onto the ancestral history of the past and something passes through it an illness an event an, an awakening or whatever it is i mean i'm i'm I mean, I, in 97, it's just coming to me that uh, Tony Blair was had Pluto on his seventh house cusp when he came into office. I think his his image um, had to uh, um, his his personalized life had to give way to a public image. It's as if he became seventh house. He he became the for him it was a. Uh, the dying to a, a particular image of himself and the resurrection of something uh, a, 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 as he becomes a, a, a channel, as it, if you like, for for, um, for a certain period of time while he was in office. Margaret Thatcher had uh, Pluto conjunction some when um, she became, uh, in 1979, when she came into office. Uh, she has sun squared Pluto in in her natal horoscope, so there was something here about really transforming the, the person who she was and her her character. Uh, then was utterly utterly changed and had to um, uh, come into office a, a, a different person or grow into being a different person. People can get married at these times. It's the death of the individual self. I don't want to be all doom and gloom about it, but I think in external and political senses, we can start to see these rather dark or destructive elements appear as as um, deep transformations in the outer and the inner world that we must inevitably face from time to time if we are to be whole. I may do more videos on this as, as the mood takes me, but I hope that's proved helpful. Thank you.